name is Philip Harrelson. I'd like to welcome you back again to the Barnabas study. And uh, previously I have uh, mentioned uh, a podcast. It's called the TDC Tapes. And it's uh, hosted by Podbean. And uh, I've got another podcast I'm sort of kind of trying to determine what I'm going to do with it. It'll probably be out a little bit later on. And that'll be an Apple uh, hosted uh, platform. And so and on, on Spotify. Uh, but I have put out some of the, the TBC tapes, which is some of the lectures uh, out of our classes there at Texas Bible College. But working with all of that and going through some of the notes and then uh, the tapes and all that, which these tapes are 32, 33 years old because it was from 1989, fall of 89, uh, until May of uh, 19. Uh, 92 that I that I graduated and uh, so I uh, sort of wanted to kind of uh, just kind of brought back some memories uh, in my mind and uh, I am in the process of, of trying to do everything I can I want to encourage preachers and help them as much as I possibly can uh, literally to do the will of God and to serve the Lord uh, wherever they're at uh, but during that period of time, pretty profound impact on me, and I, I ran into some some young men uh, that really had a very profound impact on my life, and I've kept up uh, with, especially with two of those. Although don't I don't talk to them as much as I uh, have in times past. But Paul Jacks, who sat right next to me, and then Brian Aaron, and uh, Brian went to Life Tabernacle. That was whenever it was on Broadway, and Brother Kilgore was the uh, minister was a pastor there at that gr incredible church. And then Robert Escabel was also a member there at Life Tabernacle. Um, Brother Escabel is pastoring a church uh, down in Laredo. And uh, Paul is in the Austin area. Brian, I think, is in the College Station area in Texas. And so those guys were my primary uh, guys that I really spent uh, most of my time with. And then uh, Greg Butter and Lauren Brooks, um, I spent a lesser amount of time. But, but, but again, those, those were probably the five guys that I spent uh, most of the time with while I was there at, at Bible College. And uh, sometime back, I found this fella up in uh, the state of Michigan, and uh, he set up, a, he's a retired minister, and he set up a YouTube channel. He does a lot of book reviews, various things like that. And so I um, have uh, really tried to... Uh, in fact, I, I listen to him on pretty regular, and he, he gets into some, sometimes just telling stories. I found it very interesting, and he shared enough information that you get a pretty good idea about who he is, what he's about, uh, his family dynamics, some of his ministry history, books, library, that sort of thing. And uh, some of the some of the things that he's he's really just opened up and shared with us has caused me to think. You know, you think sometimes that people just get on and ramble about various things in their life, but uh, it, it, it's cause everybody has a story, and uh, everybody can tell a story. And I, I have to just say that that brother uh, N Z, uh, brother Keating, brother Griffin, brother Hunt profoundly impacted me, but these guys did as well, Paul and Brian. Every day uh, we had a 20, 20, 25 minute break and there was a little bakery that was right across the street. It was called the La Victoria. And uh, none of them could speak English over there. Of course, we couldn't speak Spanish. And so we go over there and, and uh, we started eating their breakfast tacos. And uh, so <laughs> from probably winter of 89 until spring of 92, pretty much it was a lot of days that we would go over there and uh, talk about class and talk about preaching and chapel services and various things like that. And uh, again, what I didn't realize was at the time was just that process of fellowship that these guys were really uh, encouraging things in me uh, as far as prayer goes, uh, disciplined Bible study, uh, putting uh, sermons together. Of course, Paul uh, at the time, Paul Jacks was, was the best preacher. In fact, he was probably one of the best preachers in our entire student body. And uh, our at the time, our 
a student body uh, freshman class right at 100 and then the uh, junior class was probably I don't know 50 or 60 people and then the senior level uh, dropped off to about 30 or so and so in that you got probably in the neighborhood of 160 to 180 students uh, that, are, that are there and uh, Paul was probably he and another uh, fellow Mark McCool probably the best two preachers out of our entire student body. They were constantly preaching various places on the weekends, generally in the Houston uh, or the East Texas area. Occasionally they branch over into Louisiana. Uh, but I can remember us sitting in there and uh, talking about sermon notes. And of course, at the time, uh, most of the sermon notes were handwritten. They weren't nearly as, as uh, detailed as what, what my notes are now. And uh, we, of course, we did not print them out on anything back then. Uh, it's when computers were just in the beginning to, to kind of get in. So if you had access, it generally was going to be hard copies or books. And uh, so there was a lot of emphasis that was put. If you had sermon books, uh, there was a lot of opportunity for, for if you could buy them. Uh, and there were a couple of bookstores there. There was what was called the Baptist Bible Bookstore that became Lifeway uh, later on, which was the publishing arm or is the publishing arm of the Southern Baptist Convention. They had several stores scattered around the Houston area. And then there was another bookstore that was down in Pasadena, and that was called Pilgrim Publications. And uh, their claim to fame was Bob Ross, the owner there, had gone in and uh, somehow or another had managed to get uh, the rights to the Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon sermons. And so his company, Pilgrim Publications, published uh, Charles Spurgeon sermons. And I've got that entire set, it's a 63 volume set. And uh, I purchased those after I graduated from TBC. Of course, at the time, you could only get them. Uh, they did not have the full set. So what I would do is I had a subscription. And uh, about every other month, they'd send three or four volumes according to whatever they were printing. At the time, you could get them uh, for like 15 to $18 per copy. And uh, obviously, I think now, it's, if you get a hard copy of it, uh, incredibly uh, way price far more than that although most uh, people uh, Logos Bible software I think even Accordance uh, Bible softwares because they're so old they're in public domain so you can download them in, a, in an electronic format but uh, there were several times where that <clears throat> Paul and, and Brian and I would go down to Pilgrim Publications and uh, just nose around in there and I will say that at the time Bob Ross did not appreciate uh, Pentecostals obviously won this Pentecostals and uh, if you got in there while he was there he was going to try to hit you up and argue and debate and all that sort of thing with you as far as the Bible goes and there were several guys that go down there just for the sake of wanting to argue with him and uh, they would go down there but but his bookstore was really very well stocked and uh, he had a lot of ser all the old sermon books uh, Robert G. Lee, Clarence McCartney, Clovis Chappell um, G. H. Morrison, uh, Alexander McLaren, um, George Truett, uh, guys like that. Uh, that that really Andrew Jukes. Uh, that's kind of a uh, maybe some name you're not very familiar with. But but all of those books down there, you could go down there and you could purchase uh, those books over in Pasadena. And so we would go over there. Uh, to those bookstores. And then, of course, during the, uh, the Houston area at the time, probably, I don't know, probably 40 or 50 churches. And uh, some of those churches at the time were incredible places. And uh, obviously, Brother Kilgore there on Light and Broadway had Life Tabernacle. Uh, Brother Foss up in the greater Houston area, I think his church at the time was called Bethel. And then, of course, Brother Macy was over on the west side. Brother Gurley was down in Pearland. His father in law at the time was there and uh, brother old elder Barnett was down there and then various churches that were scattered around uh, through that area brother Holly would frequently come to the school brother Kilgore uh, would come occasionally and uh, brother Foss some of the most uh, convicting heart felt sermons that I've ever heard in my life were preached by him and then over in Pasadena uh, Apostolic Temple uh, pastored by brother Wayne McLean 
And uh, those were just some very strong churches at that time. Something was always going on uh, on the weekends, and they would have our top flight UPC preachers uh, that would come through there. And, of course, Brother Urshan would come through there pretty frequently to Life Tabernacle and, and would preach. I can remember getting to school on Monday mornings, and uh, Brian uh, would spend a lot of time with Brother Kilgore, and he'd say, hey, he said, guess who I went out to eat with last night? And he'd name off whoever it was that was at the service there in, in uh, at Life Tabernacle. And uh, Brother Kilgore, in fact, there was one time Brother Kilgore took Brian and I out to eat. I was so nervous. And <laughs> it was a buffet. We spent probably two hours, two and a half hours with Brother Kilgore. Very treasured memory. Uh, but I was so nervous. I liked to choke on my rice. Uh, but Brother Kilgore just had just a way about, you know, working with young preachers, very interested in us. And uh, then later on, I would, would kind of get to uh, see him some. He would come through Alabama and uh, just always just very uh, genuine and interested in what was taking place in uh, my in my life personally. Wanted to know where I was at. Of course, Brother Kilgore was Brother Patterson's hero. And uh, so, so again, those are just kind of some of the memories uh, that I've had that's kind of stirred back. And I think what I may do is, uh, as time goes on and putting up these, these lectures on uh, the TBC tapes, uh, I'll kind of maybe <laughs> stop and pause and if you're even interested and just tell some of these stories uh, about some of those times that took place in uh, my days there whenever I was at Bible College from 1989 to, to 92. So anyway, I'll uh, stop. And uh, again, thanks for stopping in. Lord bless you. And uh, pray that, that the Lord uh, just works things. And I, and I, I trust He will. Uh, just it's important for you to stay and continue to walk out and do the will of God, serve God's purpose, uh, no matter what obstacles and hindrances comes to your life. Just, just keep your head down and uh, keep your knee down. Do the will of God and uh, let the Lord work out your story. Amen. The Lord bless you.